Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you all to the inaugural webinar, per, webinar of Pearls of Wisdom. This is a new initiative of Siron College of Physicians and is a brainchild of the President Siron College of Physicians 2022, Professor Arusha Disanai. Today, we are glad to have Emeritus Professor Saman Gunatilekar, who is the uh, is well known person to all of us, and he is going to talk to us on scientific fraud, fake, fake papers, and predatory journals. First of all, I would like to invite Professor Arusha Disanayake to introduce the objectives of the new initiative Pearls of Wisdom to all of you. Thank you. It's over to you, Professor Arusha. Uh, right. A very good evening to all of you. Uh, you must forgive the disturbance in the background. My dogs have gone to war with, uh, I think, uh, someone near the gate. So ignore the background uh, interruptions. Uh, it is indeed a great pleasure for me, Mr. President, to welcome all of you to this uh, very important webinar today. It's the first in our series called Pearls of Wisdom. Now, at the outset, I must, uh, we must remind ourselves this year, we have placed a huge emphasis on learning from peers. And we've gone beyond our usual specialty updates. And we've introduced a three-pronged uh, peer learning program. One is uh, we had last week, peer learning from overseas experts. That's called the cutting edge series. We have had two brilliant lectures on that. And then we have peer learning from our outstation colleagues. We've already had one, uh, another fantastic session. And the second session is on, I believe for the 6th of April, again, inviting all of you to join that as well. Uh, then the third in this series, we are having the first uh, webinar today. Actually, we were, well, we were to have this uh, at the beginning of March, but unfortunately, with the onset of power interruptions at that time, we were wondering whether that would come to a close soon, but things have not been the same. So we thought um, we will go on despite the power interruptions, and then we rescheduled this lecture today. And this is, we are starting off on a very, very important topic, a very hot topic, something which is important to both consultants and trainees uh, in to make sure that we do not fall into the trap of uh, we are looking at scientific fraud, uh, you know, predatory journals, uh, false publications. So we are trying to avoid falling into the trap of one is, is getting information from unreliable sources. That's one. And second thing is uh, getting trapped into making our own publications, making our own research be published in, in fake journals, which is going to cause academic discredit to us one fine day. I myself have had been a co-author of a, of, a, of, a, of a publication which appeared in a fake journal. And then, of course, uh, you know, had to withdraw that. And that, that, that was also quite troublesome. They don't let you withdraw also early. So at that time, we were not really aware of these things. But now there is more awareness. And then to make us even more aware, we have one of the most eminent medical men in Sri Lanka. It's my great honor and privilege to introduce uh, Professor Saman Gunatilaka. And now he's a man whom I admire and respect very much. He has been a past president of the Sri Lanka, the Ceylon College of Physicians. And he has been a top intellectual to whom all of us, uh, I mean, I've looked up to him as a trainee, as a consultant, and even as a president of the CCP, I look up to him for wisdom and guidance. He's a top intellectual who is uh, who who really leads the way in our thinking? You know, you 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 have heard him speak about overdiagnosis, uh, the emphasis on bedside medicine that he brings back to medicine. So all of those, he he really makes us think. So it's a great pleasure to have sir with you. And then uh, I will hand over to Barana to conduct the rest of the prayer program. Again, thanking uh, sir as well as the great audience that we are having here, as well as Barana and the team who made all this possible. Nalina, with his fantastic IT support. Thank you, everybody. Let's have a great session. Over to you, Barana. Thank you very much. Thank you, to, right. sir, as well. Yes. Over to you, sir. So thank you very much for your uh, kind word of introduction and uh, letting us know the objectives. And uh, uh, now uh, I will invite sir to uh, begin the webinar. 
and as well as i think if you have any questions please uh, be kind enough to uh, type into the q and a sessions when sir finish the uh, lecture we will um, put those questions to sir okay so i'll hand over to sir uh, to con con conduct the session thank you thank you barana for that introduction and thank you arusha for a very flattering introduction uh, and i'm also kind of honored for you having asked me to start this series of talks pearls of wisdom uh, we have postponed it few times i think hoping that the power situation will improve but it doesn't seem to be but so we thought well let's get on with it so i uh, i chose this topic because i, I felt this may be a topic that we need to be aware of as consultants as junior trainees or even young doctors so that we won't as arusha said get caught by these fraudulent uh, people who are out to make money out of the ignorant young scientists so i my title is really on fake papers and predatory journals to start with this is one of the most uh, recent things which i saw yeah this 24th march just uh, maybe less than two weeks in nature this paper rise the rise of citational justice uh, this uh, person in the middle is a scientist known as kristen smith she found that when she went for scientific meetings her work is being quoted by people but her name or citations are never mentioned so she mentioned this to few people and then she thought this may be because one they are females the other reason may be because they are black so the next meeting she went with about 100 t-shirts like this saying the slogan cite black women now in this article it shows that how researchers are oversighted or undersighted so on these at the top the orange brownish line are men then next is women and men men and women and the last line is both women so it shows it looks like the females are being under cited and even if you take the black women according to this paper even they are further and under cited but we may argue saying that well okay maybe the research they do is not so good that's why not cited but they have looked at this carefully they have taken out those confounding factors and found that purely being a female and being black you are at a disadvantage when people are citing your work they tend to ignore the work done by these people so that's one very new problem in science citations right yeah so in another article in nature it was mentioned that it's similar to a hydra who's growing in a hydra it's, it's a greek mythical animal where if you cut one head off two heads sprout from there so even the predatory journals or predatory 
work has become something like that. And they are called bootleg, meaning illicit. Bootleg is a, a common term for illicit liquor, but now it's been used for any illicit product. And in this article, the US Federal Trade Commission won 50 million ruling against a publisher known as Omics International for deceptive business practices. The Federal Trade Commission investigation found that Omics accepted and published nearly 69,000 articles in academic disciplines with little or no peer review. The judgment against the infamous publisher is Omics is important because it comes at a later stage as well. The judgment against the infamous publisher located in Hyderabad, India, proved difficult to enforce. But the ensuing stigma still carries a penalty. In the two years after the commission filed its complaint, the articles Omics published under its imprint fell by 40%. After all, a publisher with no reputation is preferable to a publisher with a bad one. So that's a big, what is known as a paper mill or a publisher, uh, based in India, was found to be doing this kind of predatory work. So at the bottom here, the, the scientific advice, the principal scientific advice to the government of India said that, lamented the difficulty of stamping out the menace of predator publishers. He likened them to the Hydra, the creature of Greek myth that sprouts two heads for each one severe. So coming back or coming on to this man, Jeffrey Beale, he was the librarian at the University of Columbia, Colorado, Denver. Now, he's the one who started this predatory publishing. He picked up, uh, I think it was starting in 2011, listing these journals, predatory journals. And what he said is, what is important is this. When it comes to scientific literacy, that must include the ability to recognize publishing fraud. So it's now probably something that we have to teach, something we have to learn, all of us. Scientific literacy include the ability to recognize publishing fraud. Not even the very prestigious journals are free from this problem. There is one instance where nature had to retract a study after publishing, six years after publishing, because they, they found some of the investigations and the, uh, the, the diagrams of photos in that article were fabricated. And so they had to withdraw that. So even the prominent or very prestigious journals, we need to be aware that they also may be caught in this fraud. Then more recently, this problem we had, this BBC News, thousands worldwide have taken ivermectin to fight cold. But there are serious errors in key studies that the drugs promoters rely on. And it says how false science created a COVID miracle drug. Another news piece was that in India, in Uttar Pradesh, they were dishing out these wonder drug to all COVID patients. They didn't know what was in that, but later it was found that what it contained was doxycycline and ivermectin. And in this paper in BMJ Evidence-Based Medicine, 
misleading clinical evidence and systematic reviews on ivermectin for COVID-19 because they, there were problems with this. And in nature, this paper, flawed preprint, highlight challenges of COVID drug studies. So there was, there was a publication which a lot of people relied on, a meta-analysis or a systematic review, where they collected all the available papers and came to the conclusion that maybe ivermectin is useful. And that's how all this started. But when they looked at it carefully, they found that this is not the case. This paper, which was the, probably the largest paper in this meta-analysis, was not published really, it was a preprint. The pre so there's another problem we have currently because the articles those days were published in a journal. But now it is possible to publish your article, a preprint before it's being peer reviewed in these websites. And one is the Research Square, where they publish these articles preprint before being published in a journal, which is available for anyone who's doing a systematic review. But later on, editorial note says the Research Square withdrew this preprint on 14th July, due to an expression of concern communicated directly to our staff. These concerns are now under formal investigation. So there had been a lot of discussion after that about this paper, but it's not published yet. And what they found in this paper, this paper is from Egypt, and the paper's irregularities came to light when a, when a student, a master student in the University of London was reading this sort of class assignment and noticed that some phrases were identical to those in other published articles. And when he contacted the, the researchers who specialize in detecting fraud, there are people like that if you want, in scientific publications, the group found other causes for concern, including dozens of patients' records that seem to be duplicates, inconsistencies between the raw data and the information in the paper, patients whose records indicate they died before the study start date. So they have died even before the study started, but they were included in the study and numbers that seem to be too consistent to have occurred by chance. So this paper, for that reason, was considered fraudulent and withdrawn. So the science is a gentleman's game. Publication is true or was. Still, I think the open access came into the field. So science has relied on a gentleman's agreement. Authors agreed to carry out only honest and ethical research. Journals agree to manage peer review fairly and honestly. No human activity works perfectly all the time. And peer review is no exception. Just uh, excuse me. Right, yeah. So, what is a peer review? We all know that, but in case there are young people, young people, this may be useful to know that when you sent in a paper, scientific study, first they do this, scientists study something, and they, then they write it, write, write the paper, and then it is sent to the journal editor, and he receives these articles, and then sends it for peer review, the peers. Peers are they, sometimes the journal select, sometimes now they ask even you know, the authors who are supposed to be experts in that field. 
and they read the article and then they will give the opinion. And if it meets editorial and peer standards, it is published in the journal. Or else the editor will send the article back to the authors with the comments from the peer reviewers so that they can alter the paper. Or else it may be rejected. So that's the peer review process. But is this perfect? This is Yeah, so in this article, in the Edinburgh College Journal, discusses the dangers that may compromise peer review system. One is adversarial peer review. That is, it goes to somebody who you are not very good with, and he's not going to give you a good review. And another problem with peer review is you, are, you receive the article for peer review from the journal. But what you do is you delay the peer review when you do the research yourself, replicating the peer review manuscript prior to publication. This also has happened. This happened, I think there was a couple of instances even in Sri Lanka. This happened. Peer review with conflict, conflicts of interest. Like, you know, sometimes you, you may be involved in a similar study and you don't want that paper to be published because of that. And also soliciting authorship. That is, you get a peer review from a few authors and you will contact them. Because sometimes you, you can get to know these authors and solicit to be an author of the paper. Callous peer review, you don't bother very much. You just say, oh, okay, very good paper or something like that and send it back. And fake peer review is another new problem. What is fake peer review? Yeah, so this was another article in the New England Journal where they found this peer review fraud, hacking the scientific publication process, and they had to withdraw 64 articles from 10 different subscription journals from this person who was an engineer. And what he did was he formed a peer review and citation ring in which he used 130 bogus email addresses and fabricated identities to generate fake reviews. So nowadays this happens because sometimes the journal will ask, well, nominate your peer reviews. And so what I would do is I will create these fake emails, which comes back to me. So the journals normally insist on not private emails, institutional emails, but still, I think people can get over that. So you have these emails and they come to you and then you write your own peer review and send it back. And these happen, this happened in this instance. And these papers were published even, I think, in the New England Journal of Medicine. So now, now we have two types of journals. One are the subscription-based journals. You pay for the pay for the journal or pay for the membership when you get the journal. This, this is been the normal practice. But then came the open access journal, which was a very good thing because we all could access the journals. But with that, there came problems as well. For instance, in uh, 2010, there were 53,000 articles open access. In 2014, there were 420,000 articles. So it's a rapidly growing uh, source of information. But this has also created problems and also unethical behavior in the scientific field. So this 
So we come to the new frauds in the academic world and the, what is what can be called cybercrime. So some common problems are plagiarism, which we all know about, that is copying text or data from data from another article, but nowadays can be kind of sorted because there are uh, apps where you can use to detect plagiarism. Most of the journals use that. Then self citations. Which is you cite your own article. Well, sometimes it may be right, but some what happens is you over, overdo that. And then bias uh, the scientific background. And also you will be counted as a um, citation. So number of citations you have is another way of uh, what are known as Scientometrics, where an author is ranked for promotions and in the university system for the field of science. Then, of course, the peer review hacking, shadow writing. Shadow writing is where you get other people to write your article. You don't write. People can argue whether it's a right thing or bad thing. And also the gift authorship. You give authorship to whoever who is around, who keep them sometimes quiet, or because they are well known in the field. So when their name is in that article, the editors will look at it more kindly. So these are the problems we have in science publications. And this is another new thing, which is known as the clubbing effect in citations, where you cite your own group of people. They form a club, like it's like a club. So this is a situation where elite authors extensively cite each other. And so their citations will increase so that they are high ranked. Then the paper mills. These are like you contact them and they will write a paper. For you. They will give you a paper, you have to pay them. They will include your name and give it. So this was not noticed by a person, a, a editor in the Royal Society of Chemistry Advances Journal. Laura Fisher. She noticed striking similarities between research papers submitted to this journal, and she grew suspicious. And none of the papers had authors or institution in common, but their charts and titles look alarmingly similar. So they were known as the companies that churn out fake scientific manuscripts to authors. Funnily enough, this was a paper in 2021, that's recently. The, 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 all the papers they found came from, a, from authors in Chinese hospitals. The journal's publisher in London announced in the statement that it had been the victim, this journal, that it had been the victim of what it believed to be the systematic production of falsified research. So these are the paper mills where you pay and you get your name inserted in a, inserted in a paper. And then of course the hijacking of journals is another aspect in this game where they brand jack of a legitimate academic journal by a malicious part. What they do is they go looking in these sites for this kind of reputed journal. And sometimes the journal which has top publishing, they will steal that 
they will hijack that journal into a new website and use it. So the people who didn't know that the, this journal is no more will now send in papers for this journal because this has a fairly known reputation and they pay and the money is there, but that's not a proper journal. So the imposter journal sets up a fraud website for the purpose of offering scholars the opportunity to rapidly publish the research. So that's what they say. We will, our peer review process is very fast. It will be published in one month. So in 2012, this, these people, the cyber criminals began hijacking print only journals by registering a domain name and creating a fake website under the title of the legitimate journal. So the, this journal don't have website because it's a print only, but they create the website for journal and they receive the articles for money. And the hijacked journals are fake websites that use the name and the ISSN of the authentic journal to cheat authors. Yeah, so this I put this table, there are about 90 journals in this, hijacked journals from 2011 to 2015. Even the JAMA, Journal of the American, American Medical Association is included. They were hijacked. What they did was, if their website is JAMA, dot jama network dot com they created one which is very similar and people will get fooled it's ama american medical association journal dot org so anyone who puts that sometimes what happens is when you search this fake website comes before the original genuine website in a search so people go for that get caught and they think they have submitted their paper to the proper JAMA, which is not the case. Similar for about 90 journals in this list. So they use similar URLs to authentic journal, create website for journals that did not have a website, and they search in Thomson Reuters, which is another, well, they list all these journals, normal journals, for to find expired domains, then register them new. Then you get these are uh, these are journals, but paper hygiene. fake proofreading sites. I mean probably most of you may have experienced this. Sometimes you get emails asking you to send your papers for proofreading to them. They might say sometimes they will do it free or for a nominal fee. But some of these people, what they do is they steal your paper. While they proofread, they sell that paper to somebody else and it's published somewhere else. And then you will get, by the time you get it, they have been published somewhere else. So they sell them to the others, publish with different authors, and also sometimes they hijack grant proposals and use it for, to give it to others to apply for grants. So we have uh, two challenges. One is of course the open access to scientific knowledge. We have to be aware of that. And it's a good thing sometimes. But because of that, because of the free access to publish anything in these fake journals or predatory journals, our scientific knowledge, the validity is in question. Sometimes we have this problem of pseudoscience. Like I, I, I may be wrong in saying this, but are you making story? Maybe it will be proven one day it, it works, but at the moment, it's like what I would call pseudoscience.
and the scientists or the academics are measured by these, the scientometrics, the journals and the papers. One is the impact factor, citations, H index are three main ones, but there are others as well. And the websites, reliable websites look at these, are uh, Medline, Scopus, Web of Science, Google Scholar, PubMed, Directory of Open Access Journals, and then the ISI Scientific Citation Index, and others. Of this, I put PubMed in blue, because PubMed is not that reliable because a lot of these fake articles get seem to get into PubMed, whereas it's more difficult to get into others like Scopus and Web of Science, but they're also not 100% foolproof. So in impact factor of a journal, we, we normally look at this when we publish to see whether you know, if we have a high impact factor, that's a good journal. In any given year, the two year journal impact factor is a ratio between the number of citations received in that year for publication in that journal that were published in the two preceding years and the total number of citable items published in that journal during the two preceding years. So it's a bit of a jargon, but uh, so the NEGM has an impact factor of 74, Nature 42, Science 41, Lancet Neurology 44 and BMG 39. But also this, this is not, very, not a very fair system because if you have a journal like NEGM, which is very general, it's likely that you have high citations. But if it was Lancet Neurology, where you publish only neurology articles and the neurologists kind of look at it, it may have a lower citation. So we need to be aware of that problem. Then the citations are, of course, the number of times your article had been cited. So it may have an article, a popular article, which had been there now 10 years, but it had been cited 1,000 times or more. Or another article not so popular, 10 years old, maybe only 10 times. Or an article which is published three years ago, maybe it's about, it has got about 50 citations. So those are the ones. And then the H index is another thing that we measure the ranking of an author. So this is intended to represent both the productivity and the impact of a particular scientist or a group. And this is calculated by counting the number of publications for which an author has been cited by other authors at least that same number of times. For instance, if a person has an H index of 17, that means that the scientist has published at least 17 papers that have each been cited at least 17 times. So his 18th paper may be only cited 10 times, so his H index is 17. Once the 18th paper is cited 18 times, then its H index go, goes up to 18, provided all the, by now all the papers have been cited 18 times. So this, of course, is the device to prevent the problem of citation index, because if you have a citation index, citations, number of citations, if your article was 20 years old, which has 1,000 citations, but you've not done any work after that, maybe few, not many citations, you will have a high citation index. But if you take the H index, that person will not have a high H index because he's not published anymore to go up to the number of times the article has been cited. So the H index is generally over 10, 15 is considered a good good H index, but there are people with a 40 H index, 50, 60, 70. And this, this H index is, is normally found in websites like Scopus and Web of Science. So these are the scientific metrics that we use. But of course, these fake people or the fake publishers have managed to create their own impact factors, citations, and H index. And they have sometimes 
put them in these science uh, websites as well. So there are highly respected open access journals. One is the Public Library of Science or PLOS journals. There are about 12 journals and is published by a non-profit publisher called Public Library of Science. And PLOS One was the first multidisciplinary open access journal. And they charge, it's not free, but, but they, they, they kind of sometimes give it free to uh, resource poor countries and to authors, but generally about US dollars 1350. And sometimes the universities will give you a grant if your paper is accepted by one of these journals. The publication fee can be obtained from a university fund. And also there are partial fee waivers for certain authors who do not have funds to cover the fee. Yeah, so the predatory journals. Now the Beale's list, I, I, I started with Jeffrey Beale. The Beale's list is a list he created to help us to recognize these journals. But of course, there was a lot of controversy, a lot of arguments, a lot of uh, allegations against him saying that, you know, you have included our journal, which is not predatory. Because there were no rigid criteria to detect which one is predatory, which one is not. But what happened was from the time he started, the number of publishers increased exponentially. Like 2010, only 18 he could find publishers, and 2012, he could find 126 journals. But by 2016, 2017, it went up to 1,294. But by that time, I think he closed it down. And there were allegations against him in the university where he worked. He resigned from the department, but we are not sure why he resigned. Nobody knows. But after that, now there is another one known as Cabell's Spread Reports, which is there. But I think sometimes you may have to pay a fee and become a subscriber. And then you can use that to verify reputable journals. So these are what these are one of the emails uh, Jeffrey Bill received. In 2013, the, I mentioned the Omics Publishing Group initially about you know, the, how they were found to be a fake publisher. They threatened to sue Bell, Bill for dollars one billion for his ridiculous, baseless, and impertinent inclusion of it on his list, which smacks. This is the exact email which they wrote to Bill, which smacks of literal unprofessionalism and arrogance. An unedited sentence from the letter read. No. Quoting from the letter, let us at the outset warn you that this is a very perilous journey for you and you will be completely exposing yourself to serious legal implications, including criminal cases, not launched, they spelled wrong, launched against you in India and USA. So these, so you would know what to do with this kind of email, but it looks nothing would happen, but they were just threatening Bill. But after that, the Omics Publishing Group changed their name into something else, which I can't remember, but Omics is still there, but they, they keep changing their name and they keep publishing these journals. They have about 700 journals in their list, but most of them are defunct. Only the names are there. And if you look at their editors in those journals, you'll find them pretty odd. Odd names with, from, countries which are normally we don't see in, in journals. 
So there was this person who wrote obviously flawed articles, uh, article and submitted to 304 journals, open access. Out of the open access journals, 161 were in the directory of open access journals, which are supposed to be reputed journals. And also to predatory journals of 121 from the Beatles list. So these obviously flawed article. It was accepted by 157 journals, rejected by 98, and no response from 49. 84 journals in Beale's list accepted the article. Surprisingly, 66 in the directory of open access journals all the public accepted this article. So we see the problem. And these are the emails these guys sent you. And this is a letter uh, email I got sometime, uh, some months back, which I just copied to show the young guys, well, if you get things like that, don't bother, don't respond. And these are clinics in oncology. I, I have nothing to do with oncology. Anyway, so he says, greetings from clinics in New York. I found your profile had a dynamic potential, which fascinates me to email you. So that line itself shows that this is not a normal formal email that an editor would write to one. We are in shortfall of single article for successful release of volume fix in issue two. Is it possible for you to support us with your opinion or mini review or any article for this issue? We really desire to receive your research work towards the public. And I think it will be a best fit for both of us to achieve the great results. Yeah. So these are the kind of article these people write. But these are not only to me, I think what they do is they send the spam emails to thousands and thousands. So the ignorant get caught and they submit their work to these people and they some and then they are requested to pay to publish the article. This article from Jeffrey Beale was published in this journal called International Journal of Women's Dermatology. But this is a good uh, good journal. But only thing is I don't know why they confined it to women. Because probably it, it's men's the Dermatology is not so important as women's dermatology. And the threat of predatory journals, the, uh, the, what happens? Receive spam email solicitation from previously unknown publishers. Then you have to be careful. And they will invite you to submit a manuscript to one of their journals or to join an editorial board or perhaps complete an ad hoc peer review of a scholarly manuscript. And also they will invite you to speak at one of their conferences. They do both publishing and organizing conferences. They will invite you to give a guest speech. Yeah, so they deceive scholars to publish in them, do not follow basic publishing standards, Peer review is improper. They send spam emails to scholars' mailboxes, which they find from other websites of journals. They have fake editorial boards and positive impact factors or false impact factors and fake websites. Five, well, there are many, but mega journals, five predatory mega journals, and their name sometimes is very funny. British Journal of Science. I mean, when you say British Journal of Science, that journal can publish anything. Everything is science. So they can publish. So they, they try to catch wider spectrum of people. And the other one is Journal of Current Research. Though it says International Journal, when you go to their website and look at the editors, you will find that they are all from, uh, I don't want to mention countries and upset uh, people who are listening, but from certain countries. International Journal of Science and Advanced Technology. Uh, I don't know what they mean by that, Advanced Technology and Science. What is the difference? 
and another one called International Journal of Sciences and a World Journal of Science and Technology. So they have broad coverage that allows them to accept a great number of articles than journalists, the narrow scope. So if you say Journal of Neurology and Neurosurgery, then it's a narrow scope. Journal of Cardiology, narrow scope. So this broad coverage means that with minimal effort and a single website, the journal owners are easily able to attract a substantial amount of authors. So that's their objective. So some, of, some examples of this, this is the journal which I was talking about, the British Journal of Science. They have the British flag also in the cover. I don't know if that is, a, if that is allowed or not, but it is there if you go to this website. Yeah, they write long this thing about, you know, everything they can include, theoretical sciences, biology, chemistry, physics, zoology, medical studies, mathematics, statistics, geology, engineering, computer science, everything can be published there. But what is marked in red is probably the, you know, clue that English is not correct, really. The British Journal of Science published from UK. I mean, it doesn't sound right. You would say British Journal of Science is published from the United Kingdom. Not so grammatically incorrect sentences are also found in these websites because they come from non English speaking countries. The next one is this one called International Journal of Current Research. Right? That also looks very funny. They have a, the, the impact factor there, which is probably a fake one. And look at their introduction. International Journal of Current Research is an international, double-blinded, referred, and period. Now, what do you mean by a journal being double-blinded? You get double-blinded articles, double-blinded random, randomized trials, but a double-blinded journal, well, I don't know. And also the referee, they spell wrong. I refer, these refer, not referee. These are the exact spelling in their website. So that's another clue to that this is a fake journal. And the next one, yeah, so the, these people operate like counterfeit scholarly publishers. Many pretend to be scholarly societies, associations, and institutes, when in reality they are merely a privately held micro business, often operated from a dwelling, just a computer. Many hide their business locations. You can't really find them where yeah, they are. They don't have a proper postal address. They have only an email or a URL or use virtual office companies to make it appear as if they are based in an Anglophone country, Anglophone in an English speaking country. They promise a fast publishing process and some even optionally charge a separate fee for an expedited review in a week or two. Some add researchers' names and university affiliations to the editorial both without the permission. And sometimes when you contact some reputed people whose names are there, they don't know it. Yeah, so the pseudoscience, they create a field of pseudoscience. The damage they cause is immense. Because people sometimes unknowingly use these studies in their reviews. So these predatory and low quality journals enable publication of pseudo activist and conspiracy theory science. Conspiracy theory of, uh, of course, the COVID pandemic sometimes, maybe. Medical science has been particularly hit hard. With journals now devoted to the unscientific medicine such as our way than home. And the problem with these is sometimes the 
public have access to these websites and they read these. And sometimes even our medical professionals sometimes quote these articles, not knowing that they are published in these fake websites. They will say there, uh, there was an article, they will quote the article saying, you know, this penny worked and all that. But they didn't know that it, though it's published, that it's published in a fake journal. Activist science seeks to promote a political or social cause such as denying anthropogenic global warming. So the global warming, they have different theories and these conspiracy theories have used open access journals to promote these theories. They keep publishing in the journals about their theories. So the clues to suggest what our predatory journals are, spam solicitations or articles, like I showed you, to be a guest editor or to be on the editorial board. Then check the internet protocol addresses within the headers of an email to ascertain its origin. Poor grammar and misspellings in a solicitation letter and on the journal's website. And also the name of the person who writes is sometimes very odd. Incorrect or fake office addresses, fake impact factors being used to promote the journal, fake editorial board members. Editorial board members you do not recognize, although the journal is purportedly new area of expertise. Yeah, sometimes a neurology journal, I may know most of these top people, but you find that you never heard of these people. Indeterminate geographical location. Although a geographical name is used, they will use American, European, but the location when you look at, you can't find it really in America or Europe. A promise for a quick turnaround. No mention of or a difficult to ascertain article processing charge. A plagiarized website. Sometimes the website is copied from another reputed journal. And also lack of transparency about ownership. Yeah, if you look, try to look for the owners of the journal, you find it very difficult to find it. Yeah, so. When you are doing that, check the publisher, validity of the publisher by whether he is a member of reputable publishing organizations, which are some World Association of Medical Editors, Committee on Publication Ethics, and International Academy of Nursing Editors. Confirm that journal websites contain accurate and current information from an independent source. If the website indicates that the journal is indexed in PubMed, check Medline to confirm. Consult Jeffrey Beale's original criteria or use Think, Check, Submit. Think, Check, Submit is a current new one where you can become a member by in this website. You can, the emails are there, all this there. You can register in this and become a subscriber and then use this website, think, think, check, submit, to check whether the journal you're thinking or submitting is a proper journal. So the six ways to spot a journal like this, always check the website thoroughly. We have discussed this previously. Poor use of language shows a low professional standard. If there's a journal fee, it should be clearly stated on the website. Check if the journal is a member of one of these directories. Check the journal's contact information whether you can find proper contact information. So sometimes they're not there, just an email, but not more than that. And also check that the time, sorry. Yeah, so often these journals state that the offices are in one country where the contact details will be in another. Check that the timestamps of incoming emails are during working hours of the country of origin. 
ensure the phone number has the correct country code. And even if they provide an address, search for it. I mean, address may be there, but just Google and search for that address to see whether it's a proper genuine address. Research the editorial board. Look at the people in the editorial board. Often predatory journals will create fake scholars or they will list scholars without their permission. One way to know for sure is to check the professional online profiles of named individuals through their listed institution page. Sometimes when you do that, you find that that person who's listed as the editor in that journal, when you check his institutional profile, he, you find that he has nothing to do with that field which was talking about, let's say, to make it simplify, in a neurology journal, let's say International Journal of Neurological Research or something, there is no such journal. When you check that person in his proper institution, then you find he's not a neurologist. He's somebody else, like a scientist or a statistician or, or, or maybe even somebody not doing it. Yeah, and also if there's no mention that he's the editor of the journal, then be careful. Normally you would definitely include if you're editor of a journal in your profile. And also we check the peer review process and the publication timelines. Yeah, if the journal advertises exceptionally quick peer review timelines, investigate them further and ensure they state online their peer review policy in full. And also read through the past issues of the journal. Just look at the contents of the journal and see, and then you will get an idea. Sometimes you will find all kinds of articles. Though you're submitting a medical article, you'll find a lot of other things, which nobody will bother to read if you send it to that journal. So in neurosciences, I mean, I've just taken this because of my interest in neurosciences, it's the same problem. So I, I don't think I will go into details, but what happened here is also, in neurosciences, there are 87, Predatory journals versus 100 reputable journals. In the neurology, there are about 101 predatory journals with 73 reputable journals. Right? So, people who submit need to be careful. And these are the list of suspected journals. Their names are interesting Aging and Neurodegeneration. American Journal of Neurodegenerative Disease, American Open Neurology Journal, things like that. Then the number eight is Asian American Neurology Research Journal. There's one called Austin Journal of Clinical Neurology, another one called Austin Journal of Neurological Disorders and Epilepsy, and another one just Austin Neurology, and another known as Austin Neurology and Neurosciences. Yeah, so these are the generally the names of these, which you need to be careful about. And also this, the last one, the global, which says global is definitely a, going to be a, something, you know, not very reputable, global journal of neurology and neurosurgery. And also here we have American Journal of Clinical Neurology and Neurosurgery. So these are suspicious journals. It goes on, the list goes on. International Journal of Clinical and Experimental Research. Yeah. So before submitting a paper to an open access journal, check whether the journal is listed in major citation databases, LCVS Scopus Index, or in the open access directory of open access journals. Cross check this with the Beals list inspect the contact information provided by the publisher, 
critically evaluate the broadness of the general scope, right? Yeah. If it says global scientific research journal of neurology, global scientific research journals, we can international journal of clinical and experimental neurology, very broad scope. Pay attention to the journal's name, as it may look suspiciously similar to a legitimate journal. For instance, here, neuroscience research letters recalls the Elsevier's reputable neuroscience letters. So people can get fooled by this and send it to the neuroscience research letters thinking it is the genuine one. Yeah, so, sorry. So to con conclude, I think, uh, I hope this has given some idea as to what is fake publishing. So I have tried to introduce the types of cybercrime. This is really cybercrime. In the academic world and presented general guidelines for detecting them because I find that there's a lack of knowledge in the academic world regarding cybercrime. It is necessary that researchers know about cybercrime, otherwise they may themselves become victims. In addition, cybercrime has an adverse effect on the quality of academic resources. For example, published papers in hijacked journals may be indexed in scientific bases and be cited in future papers. So, it's very important, as we said at the beginning, the scientific knowledge should include now a knowledge about cybercrime in scientific research. So with that, I will finish and thank you all for joining today. Probably maybe a better day than other days when you probably will be busy today with the curfew probably not so busy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Arusha. Thank you, Parana, for organizing this. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for the elaborative lecture. And in the Q&A, I think uh, there are about one question and about uh, another comment. I think the question is, is there a website or some mean where we can find the list of uh, free data journals? I think you have address and any comments, sir? Uh, I think you have address. Yeah, I think I, I, may, I showed that. No, there was yes. the news list is still there, though it's not updated. Yes. Then that Cabal's list is another new current one, which you, I think, have to pay and become a subscriber to access that. Then the last one I showed you, the think, check, and submit. If you go to that website and register with them, then you can send in your articles and uh, the journals, the name of the journal you wish to submit and find out whether uh, okay. that is a good journal. Okay, thank you, sir. Other one is just a comment. Yeah. Sorry? Your I think uh, Baran is having some uh, yeah, yeah. connectivity problems. I can actually uh, read out the comment. Yeah. Uh, till Barana joins us. Barana, when you, if you are there, please let me know. This is Arosha. The comment is from one of our past presidents, uh, oh, yeah. Dr. Raghunathan. Yeah. Very so interesting. Anyway. And yeah. Barana, you can take over. Barana, if you are there, you can take over, please. Barana, can you hear? Okay. Uh, I will read the question. I think I have. Uh, it's very interesting and frightening too. It's common knowledge, not only in social media, but in scientific papers too. There are things that is not pure science or true. My hypothetical question is, mercifully our audience is not large, won't this elaborate lecture with lots of trouble someone has taken give ideas to some of the researchers who are over enthusiastic 
and thirst for publication get ideas from this knowledge. Uh, yeah, Raghu, yes. Thanks for that comment. And yes, definitely, I think I, I idea of this is, and also like at the beginning we said that the knowledge, scientific knowledge or what we teach, I think this also should be part, part of it. At least something should be mentioned that some of these uh, these uh, things, these activities are happening in the scientific field so that the young people who would think of doing research would definitely not get caught to these people because the moment they receive these spam emails, they can get uh, kind of, uh, you know, motivated and misled into communicating with these people. And I also know of one or two young people who just beginning their careers are were editors in some of these fake journals. So that, that's important that uh, this knowledge is available to other, especially the young and upcoming. Because the, in fact, in China, this, there was a major problem. In China, they were paying a fee for publications to promote research and also as you know, in universities, if you don't publish, you, you can't survive. You need, for promotions, you need this. For most of the you know, academic promotions uh, to become permanent in the university and also salaries depend on this, on publication. So very high emphasis was given for this kind of research and fees were also paid, like awards are given. And then people started doing this. They started publishing, replicating articles, publishing in fake journals, producing fake journals. So that's why China was a hotbed of this. And then India also joined in because in, even in India, it's like tenure in a university depends on your number of articles. Though here is also, it's there. But, uh, so, but then here it's not that competitive, whereas in India, you will lose your job or in China maybe. So they, these people, you know, they had their base in these two countries. And if you trace all these predatory journals, fake articles, you find that they kind of diverge into centers in India and China because of that. So in fact, China recently stopped paying for articles published by the academics. Um. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think uh, we don't have uh, no more questions in the uh, uh, can, Q &A. Yeah. Uh, can I just, uh, this is Arosha, can yes. I just uh, speak? Yeah. Uh, one is, of course, sir, thank you so much for an uh, enlightening lecture. I, I learned so much by listening to you. Uh, if I were to just uh, summarize uh, how this whole thing came about, please correct me if whether my understanding is correct. Now, for a long period of time, we had there were medical journals which were printed and people used to either pay, you know, pay a subscription and then either obtain the hard copy or maybe online access to that journal. So that was, and then the, the authors did not have to pay, uh, I think, uh, uh, a, a large fee at all to get publication. Some were free, they published, they would, authors, submissions will be published free of charge or with a minimal charge but uh, the, it's the it's the readers who will pay for the for the articles mm -hmm. then of course came the open access thing where actually readers don't pay they mm -hmm. can access the article but to publish those articles authors pay the 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 journals and then uh, it became a culture where somebody could actually operate a journal from home or create a journal from home, charge large amounts of money. We are talking about thousands of dollars, you know, maybe $1,500 or something like that. Authors pay that money to get their publications done. So that's how this became a money earning scheme. So the reputable journals will still have, you know, people will have to pay for the journal and then read the articles, but open access, there are good open access journals as well, but open access journals are the ones where we, this is very tricky. Have I got this correct, sir? Is my understanding correct? Yeah, may, no, I think some of the printed journals or, or the reputed journals also publish, they don't charge, isn't it? There are some who will charge a nominal fee, some don't, 
at the same time it's the same with uh, open access some will waive their fee some will but as you say also it's true because most of the open access journals will it's easy to send articles and they will publish it free and also they may and also they will but more than that what is more i think is uh, the how easy to publish in this open access things whereas there is a very formal peer review process in the other reputed journals takes time where well, people who are in a hurry will always find some money 100 dollars 1000 dollars or something and uh, publish the article in this journal and because it's published within a month so it helps in your promotional aspects and various processes yeah, thank you sir yeah. Thank you, sir. And there's a small comment that uh, telling that this should be taught to our postgraduates as well as undergraduates also just about these uh, predatory journals and because they can be a victim, they be a victim of this. Yeah. And uh, as there are no more questions, uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, uh, Professor Saman uh, regarding uh, the excellent talk and the Q&A session and enlighten us about these uh, uh, the problems which young researchers can uh, face with the journals uh, and in their publications. So, uh, I, so thank you very much, sir, uh, and yeah. thank you all the uh, participants because I know there are a lot of trouble uh, in the connections as well as the uh, the power. With all these, I think we have done a, a great uh, job in completing this webinar, which was waited for more than one month and. Uh, and thank you very much. Well, on behalf of CCP, the President and Council, I would like to uh, thank everybody who joined this webinar and uh, good night to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your perseverance.